Okay, today we're talking about slope, and this is right after Ms. Strickland's lesson on uh, making equations from tables. So I just want to reference her notes really fast and to show you kind of how you should be doing things. So if you look at these notes, you have sort of what she's taken in pencil, and then what I've added in or something that she said, I've put in a different colored pen. So my advice to you is to get at least one other colored pen uh, so you can kind of make notes to yourself. And again, if you have questions, you should be writing them in there and asking us first thing in the class. Uh, so one question that you probably should have had on these notes um, occurs on example number three um, when she's doing this table here and she's told you to leave the slope as a simplified improper fraction. The reason being I'm going to explain to you today. Um, so you leave that slope as an imp uh, simplified improper fraction if necessary. Um, the other thing that you should be kind of keeping in mind is she's told you a couple times that you're going to pick the pair that works for you. So if you look at these kinds of things you need to follow what my little alpaca sticker here says um, and you pick the pair that you find simplest to divide in this case. So if it's change in y over change in x, which is easier for you? Um, I like to work with multiples of 5, so I would have definitely gone after this one. Um, when you're substituting stuff in, again, the choice is yours. Um, but I would make it easy to substitute in. And before Ms. Strickland even told me how to do this one, I actually chose the same point. So your notes, again, if you, haven't, if you don't have uh, two colored pens right, right now, go ahead and get them before we start on the new one. Uh, so today, we got to think about what is slope. It comes in a lot of different forms, but we know that slope is at M, like the mountain, like a mountain slope, um, and there's a couple different ways you're going to start thinking about it. Um, the first has to do with what she told you last time, which is slope is, is, a, is a rate of change. So ROC stands for rate of change, and specifically it's for a line because, again, we are doing these linear graphs. It's that constant rate of change. So we can calculate this by the change in Y over the change in X, also pronounced delta y over delta x. And when we have a graph, it's also going to be the steepness of that line. It is actually a calculation. When we're actually given a graph, it's sometimes easier to think about it as the form rise over run. Um, and also, you got to remember that this is, in fact, a unit rate. She said this mul multiple times in the last video. Um, it's how x changes for every one increase in x. So a unit rate is per one. Um, and then given an equation in slope-intercept form, uh, we know that that coefficient of x represents our slope. So where the m here is, where I'm pointing at a lot, uh, is going to be your slope. And remember that b is your intercept. Um, so from today, you need to kind of be able to identify and calculate slope uh, from a graph, from a set of points, and then from the equations. And that's kind of the easiest of all, because if it's in slope-intercept form, it's just a matter of identifying the coefficient. So to get us started, if we look at these sort of basic examples, we'll look at one, we'll look at two. These stairs are slightly different. It looks like the first one goes up, you know, over you know, four stories, and this guy, one, two, three, four, five stories. Um, but not only that, but the size of their steps is different. So what we're going to try to figure out is just what is the steepness of these lines. And when we do this, it's easier to kind of think as rise over run. And when we do this, we start at the left point and we work over a right just like we do in reading. So like in English, we start left, we work right, same thing. So if we look at this point and I choose the point uh, right next to it, to the right, that means I access it by going up one and over two. And the next one is the same pattern you see forming, up one over two, up one over two. And if we think of rise over run as the change in y, how far up or down, over the change in x, how far left or right, we can go ahead and calculate that as 1 over 2. Therefore, the slope of this particular example is 1 half. So we do leave it as a fraction because it corresponds now to a vertical change and then a horizontal change. If you were to put this as a decimal, it doesn't really tell you that. And plus, if you're using a decimal, that means go up 0.5 and over 1, and that would put you on a non-lattice point. So if you follow the slope as a fraction, it's pretty easy to follow the directions up and over to find your next lattice point. So on number two, if we try the same thing, we're looking at from here to here. How do I get there? I rise two and I run four. So my slope is the change in y over the change in x. That means go up 2 over 4, make sure it's simplified. These, in fact, even though they looked different, have a, an identical slope, an identical steepness. Because 2 over 1 is a simplified version of uh, 
or sorry, one over two is a simplified version of two over four. So these things have the same exact steepness. Uh, they just got there in a slightly different way. So now from our graphs, if you look at these, you have three different lines in front of you, and we're going to try to find the slope for all three lines. Um, and, as, and after we do that, we're going to try to write the equation for that line. So with my pink line, we'll start with the pink line. Um, your goal is to look at this line and select at least two points that are on actual lattice points because it's infinitely many of them. We need to strategically to see two uh, that this line intersects on an intersection. So it looks like here's one, wrong color, and here's the other. And it looks like if we were to keep going, it kind of crosses here. And if we could keep going, it kind of crosses here. So we can use any two of these things to construct it. Um, uh, will you go ahead and use these over here? So again, you would start at the leftmost, go to your to the right. So I go up two, and then over one, two, three, four, five. So what are we're creating here is what's known as the slope triangle. So for this particular line, I have a rise of two and a run of five. Therefore, my slope is two fifths. If we were to have used, say, this point and that point, it'll work the same. Uh, it's just that we're going to have to simplify down to two fifths. So if you didn't believe me, if you find this way, we're creating a triangle kind of like this, and you look and it goes from negative four up to two, that's an increase of six. And then it goes from a negative two to a positive, or negative 10 to a positive five. Uh, that looks like a run of 15. So with those, if we had a rise of 6 and a run of 15 and simplified that by dividing the top and the bottom by 3, we end up with 2 over 5, which is in fact the exact same thing. So any points within a, within a given line have the exact same slope. Uh, so if we were to look at maybe the yellow line next, what you notice between the yellow line and the pink line is that they're both increasing. It's just the yellow line is a lot, lot steeper than this line that we just did. So same thing, I choose two lattice points. It looks like here, 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 keep going, maybe here, here, and here. I'll find the ones that are closest together, and I'll do the slope triangle. So I go up, be careful of your scale. Um, you can just count them if you wish. So that's one, two, three, and then over one. So this has a rise of 3 and a run of 1, which we'll just call a slope of 3. So if you compare it to 2 fifths, this guy actually has a slope that's over 3 times steeper than this guy. Um, the difference between the first two lines and what you see in blue is that the blue one now is going to have a negative slope because it's decreasing as you read it from left to right. So same exact thing. Um, you choose. Okay, disregard what I put here. I actually used the wrong lattice points. There's one here, and when I search for it a little bit closer, this line is a little bit off, which is the deal with uh, um, graphs that are made by hand, not by a computer. So anything that we'll give you will be on a computer, so we won't have this issue. So let's go ahead and calculate the slope of this blue line. Um, I start at the left point, and I work my way right. Um, I go down, one, two, three, four, over to the right, one, so therefore the slope of the blue line is a negative 4 over 1, or simply a negative 4. We also need to talk about what the equation for these lines are. So again, in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, we've calculated all the slopes, which is now going to be the coefficient of x, and we need to address the intercept part, which is where these lines are going to intersect the y-axis. So if we come up with the equation for the yellow line, we see that y equals 3x, we go to the yellow line, it looks like it's at a negative 1, so we're just going to say minus 1. With the red line, with the pink line, we have y equals 2 fifths x, again make it look like a coefficient, and this crosses at, it looks like the origin. So instead of putting plus 0, we're just going to leave it like that. So that has no constant. Later those are going to be known as proportional lines. Finally, the blue line, we know, has a slope of negative 4, so that's the coefficient there. And we look at where the blue line intersects the, the y-axis, and it's at 2, so simply we're going to say plus 2. So if you were to compare the steepness of all the lines, in fact, the blue one is the steepest, because it has a slope of negative 4, 
This one has a slope of 3. So even though 3 is mathematically bigger, the absolute value of negative 4 is bigger, therefore it is steeper. From points, if we have, look at this example, um, I am telling you that these two points are on a line and I'm instructing you to go ahead and find the slope. So my advice to you is do exactly like what we did with the table lesson last time and you put these two uh, points in the table and then make sure that your x is increasing and then it, it really is the exact same thing. So let's put the x's and the y's here. Uh, we want to put the 3 and its corresponding 9 before the 12. So 3, 9 and 12, negative 4 and then you're just looking at your little bug arms. From 9 to negative 4 looks like a decrease of 13 and from 3 to 12 looks like an increase of 7 plus 2, that's a 9. All right? So we know that the slope is the change in the y over the change in the x. So we're looking at a negative 13 over 9. Just make sure it's simplified. And again, we want to make that thing look like a fraction. Because graphically, if we started at 3, at the point 3, 9, and then we went down 13 and over to the right 9, we would end up at the, the next lattice point on this line. All right? So that takes us to do now number 1, which I would like you to try on your own. And do now number one is for you to calculate the slope of these two lines and then of these two points and these two points, and then write the equation. So once you've paused it, um, go ahead and start it again, and we'll discuss. So in the first one, you're going to put these suckers in a table, and it looks like uh, negative six is bigger than negative two, so you should arrange them like so. And you look from nine to fourteen, and it looks like an increase of five. From negative 6 to negative 2 is a increase in 4. I hope I'm doing these right. So this means that I have a slope of 5 over 4. So that is part A. Part B, remember from last time, you have to write an equation. And I know the slope is the coefficient of that x. Now i got to find what that intercept is. So there's two ways you can do it. And on this table, you might see that it's kind of easy to go to the zero term if you wanted to, just by adding 5 twice. Or the other option is you, you choose an x and y value to plug in. Um, I'll go ahead and go with this one. So if I plug in a 14 for y and a negative 2 for x, and then I simplify that down and solve for b, these guys cross simplify. I got a negative 5 halves plus b is equal to 14. If I apo the 5 halves to both sides, I end up with 14 and 5 halves is b, which is kind of bizarro because I cannot leave a um, proper fraction and a whole number hanging out there. So 14 and 5 halves is really 14 plus 2 and a half. So we're looking at 16 halves for b. So if you string that together as one equation, y equals my slope of 5 fourths x plus my intercept, which is going to happen at 16 and a half. Um, the second one, if we're going to do this one, notice that the 5 comes before the 3, so it's your job to kind of rearrange them so that we can get the x's to increase. So we're going to put 3, 8 before the 5, negative 2. So x increases by 2 as uh, y falls by 10. Uh, so we have a slope of negative 10 over 2, which simplifies down to negative 5 over 1, uh, which you can leave like that, or you can simply say slope is negative 5. So if you were to do the same thing and solve for b, uh, we're kind of running out of room here, but we are going to say, uh, let's choose this point to work with. So I want 8 is equal to my slope of negative 5 times 3 plus some b. Uh, so we get negative 15 plus b is equal to 8. So when I apo the 15, apo the 15, that gives me 23 is my intercept. So for my equation on uh, do now b, we're looking at y equals negative 5x plus 23. And again, you should give this a quick mental check. So the next thing that we're going to look at is kind of a different variation of this. And I'm asking you if this point 4, 34 falls on the line here. So again, the line is infinitely many points. I'm wondering if the line is going to go through 4, 34. So how you check this is, again, plug it in. 4 goes in for your x. So I'm going to plug it in here. 34 for your y. If this is, in fact, on the line, the left is going to equal the right. So 8 times 3 is 32, plus that 2, yes indeed, this is on the line, because 34 equals 34. 
So yes, that's a way to test if you have points on the given line. Okay. The last thing that we're going to look at today is um, identifying or comparing slopes given equations. So I'm asking you, I have two lines, which one has a steeper slope? And again, the slope is that coefficient of x. So with this, you should have chosen line number one has a steeper slope. And if you didn't, you need to write a big note to yourself saying that the steeper slope is the one that has the greatest absolute value. So I'm not concerned with the direction of the line. Yes, one is going to decrease, while number two is going to increase. But the fact is that this has an absolute value of five. This has an absolute value of two. So this guy is, is going two and a half times quicker than this guy. So the direction doesn't matter. It's only the absolute value.